Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Timothy chapter five, still on the ministry. Chapter three, the offices of the ministry. Chapter four, the conduct of the minister. Now, rebuke not an elder. That's someone in charge of the church. Also goes well for someone who's older than you. Rebuke him not, but entreat him as a father respect and a younger men as brethren so that's an age that's an age issue we are supposed to speak we are supposed to respect our elders we don't do that the elder woman as mothers respect the younger as sisters with all purity so we're supposed to treat everybody like family Honor widows that are widows indeed. Now, I guess there are some out there who are not widows. They'll proclaim to be themselves widows. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show pity at home and to requite their parents. For there, well, excuse me, for that is good and acceptable before God. All right, we're going to run into now widowhood. They are spoken about in the law. They are spoken about here in the New Testament epistles. When a woman who has been married to a man, the man has died. She's become a widow. When her husband dies, there was no going to work back then for the women. She would lose her income. There would be no Social Security, no retirement. When her husband died, that was the end of her funds. Someone needs to take care of her. Now, what we're going to run into right now already is family. If she's got children, if she's got relatives, nephews, Show the piety at home. Let her family take care of her first. Not the state. Now that she that is a widow indeed. I guess there's some women who go around saying that they're widows and they're not. To get people to take care of them. And desolate. No one to help her. Ain't got nothing. She doesn't have a bank account. Her husband did not leave her well off. He could have been rich. If Boaz would have died before you know, leaving Ruth a uh, widow, most likely he would have been able to leave her off where she could take care of herself. He was rich and well and had property. But uh, desolate, has nothing. Trust this in God. Now look at 4 verse 10. It said, because we trust the living God. It's trust in God. And continuous in supplications. That was in chapter 3 verse, no, chapter 2 verse 1. And prayers, chapter 2 verse 1. Night and day you find an example of this woman in a woman named anna the gospel of luke she would be a woman 
that people would come to and, and listen, you know God, you trust God, I need prayers. She would be a living prayer book. And she trusted God to answer her prayers and she trusted in God and all that she had. So it looks like that God would answer the prayers of widows that were widows indeed and that trusted him. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Well, look at that. She's a widow, and man, she's going to the bingo. She's going to the casino. She's dead Oh, That's what the Bible says. She's not trusting in God. She's not praying to God. She's dead. Just like her husband. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Talking about the widows. You gotta gotta preach this message. You gotta tell that woman, you gotta get right. You gotta preach that message about women, you gotta do right. But if any provide not for his own, the family. And especially for those of his own house, his own house, his own family, his own four walls and roof, he has denied the faith and is worth worse than an infidel. So if you got somebody living in your house or you're living in their house and you're not taking care of them, you're worse than an infidel. All right, now the qualifications for a widow. Let not a widow be taken in the numbering under three score years old, having been the wife of one man. Sixty years old. The minimum age for the church to take care of a widow is sixty years old. Having the wife of one husband. Wow, we saw that in chapter three. We see her praying in supplications like the minister in chapter 2. This woman is praying day and night. And she, and she trusts God like the minister walk of chapter 4. So this, this widow woman or women, for the church to take care of, she is not a minister or preacher, but her life is equal to that of. And I would probably would say that she, without being in the pulpit, she is probably in that church, the right hand of that pastor. I would assume that, like Anna, people would go to her for prayer rather than the pastor. Because he's given to study the word of God and preach the word of God. The deacons are called to, to take care of the women. If you remember the book of Acts, I forget which chapter it is. They were called to be deacons because the widows were not being taken care of and it sent out a bad report among the Gentiles. You're not taking care of your, your women. There are a bunch of women here who have no one to take care of them and you, the church, are not taking care of your widows. So Paul is dressing Timothy, who's going into the ministry, written to a minister of the Bible, of the gospel. There are women who have been married, who are no longer married because of death, and somebody has to take care of them. You don't run them off to the state. You have their family take care of them. And if they have no family and they're desolate or they got a loser in the family, if you're going to have the church take care of them, they got to have qualifications. Number one is they got to be at least 60 years old and they can't be li living in pleasure and at least one husband. So it, here, one of the responsibilities of the church is, as far as the finances, is you got a faithful woman who's serving God and doing right become where everything comes desolate in her in her life she's over 60 she's supposed to rely on the church not social security I don't know one church that does this unless some of them not do are doing it without a public show 
well reported of well reported of for good works. Wasn't that one of the qualifications we saw in three for the deacon and for the for the one who went to be the bishop? She had to be known for doing good to the people in the church and without. If she has brought up children, it says if. A widow does not have to have children. But if she has brought up children, okay, it's an help. If she has lodged strangers. Now, this is an oriental custom you saw in the Old Testament with Abraham that people would come into town, they would sleep in the streets, they would take them in. What do you do today with a verse like that? I would not advise today that you would take strangers into a widow's house. Not the way people are today. You don't know. It says a stranger. Somebody you do not know. But here's the cause. Instead of sending them off to a hotel or a motel, she takes them into their house. She has a what kind of bed and breakfast. She takes care of them. She feeds them. She gives them bedding. Here's one that doesn't happen in the church, but did. If she has washed the saints' feet. Now, we don't do that no more. You say, you know, and they say, well, the church orders of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. You know, it's not necessary and all that, but it shows up in 1 Timothy. It hasn't been completely done away with. And there are some churches that still do this. They will have, I don't know if it's annual, however often they do it, they will call the, the people of the church and they will have a day where they wash the saints' feet. Is it wrong? Evidently not. If she, ha if she have re yeah, relieved the afflicted, there are people who are being persecuted, verse 10 of verse 4, and she comforts them. She gives them advice. She prays for them. She does whatever she can to help that person afflicted. Whatever the, It doesn't even say what the affliction is. Whatever it is, she helps them. She relieves them to her capabilities. If she has diligently followed every good work. Verse 10 says she's reported of good works that she has followed every good work. So she's not in places where she shouldn't be as a Christian. She's not doing things that she shouldn't be doing as a Christian. She's doing that which is proper and right. A lot of American women would not fall for this classification. But the younger widows refuse under 60 for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, relying on Jesus to do everything for them, but but younger than 60, everything is being provided for them by the church, but they're young. They will marry. Get married. There's nothing wrong with re remarriage if a husband dies. 1 Corinthians 7. Only in the Lord. If she's marrying age, let her find someone else to get married. Having damnation. Because they have cut, cast off their first faith. And the danger here looks like them just giving up Christ. Becoming a burden. They'll just get married to get out under it. They'll marry whoever they want to marry. No regard to the Bible. That's the only way you can get damnation. You marry a man who's not saved. Who's not a Christian. That's going to be a damnable life. Because they cast off their first faith. They're not relying on Jesus Christ. The church will provide for them. Or they'll just find anybody and anybody. 
And remember what Corinthians said that, okay, if you do marry, you're going to be... You're going to give to your husband more than you're going to give to God to please him, which is not wrong. And with all they learn to be idle, the younger ones, they'll become idle. They won't do nothing. Wandering about from house to house, and here is a bad house to house. They're idle. They have nothing to do. No purpose. And not only idle, but tattlers and also uh, also and busybodies. That's Facebook. They sit at the computer with no purpose, writing things that have no legitimate anything to do with anything. Their idleness has turned them to be tattlers. Well, you won't believe what this family does. I was in their house. You won't believe what they do with their children. Busybodies is a is a poor uh, thing to be doing in the Bible. You have no aim. You have no purpose. You're there. And going house to house and all that, you know what? You become burdensome to the people. Be like, the doorbell, who is it? Oh, man, it's her again. She was just here yesterday. And I hear that she speaks about us. I hear she speaks. She comes over here and she speaks about, you know, the Joneses and the Smiths and all that. And then she gets a not good report of work. Of not good works. So in that case, she violates verse 10. Speaking things which they ought not. So they got a mouth sin now. So if you want a verse for Facebook, it's 513. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Look at that. First Corinthians, Paul kept saying, I wish you'd be like me. Widower or single. We don't know what Paul was. Here he's saying, get married. Bear children. Arr, no, not that kind of bear children. Guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. That's Satan. That is what a married woman should do. And to a woman who's lost her husband, get married if you're young and go back to what you were doing. So the time comes later on if you become a widower again, you become of age, you've got a good report. This is a good report. You bear your children, you guide your home, you just, Satan can't reproach you. But sorrowly, for some are already turned aside after Satan. Who? Young widowers. Satan's got them. So they violate verse 10. They're not doing good works with Satan. And it's quite interesting. I, maybe this is an offflow of what we're learning. Maybe we see Paul. He speaks about the devil. He speaks about Satan. He tells us Satan's characteristics. We tell He tells of Satan's warnings. What Satan does. And yet Paul never says anything about hell. Paul warns us of the character of Satan. Jesus warns us of the place called hell. You put Paul and Jesus together, their teaching, you get a complete story of Satan and hell. Satan will attack young women with idleness, Facebook. That is happening today throughout all America, throughout the whole world. That little device is attached four, six inches from their nose today. That's idol. That's idolatry and idol. Both. If any man or woman that believe they ha believe have widows, all right. Someone in your family that's a widow, let them let them relieve them. 
and let not the church be charged. That's what we read verses 9 through 13. If she ain't got nobody, then you bring her to the church. If she's fit the qualifications, she's to come to the church for the help. Let not the church be charged. What's that mean? Ever hear of a charge card? That's where the word came from. Charge. That it may relieve them that are widows indeed. You got a widow in your family? She's Indeed, she fits this qualification? Listen, a family can say, hey, she's got to fit these qualifications. If she's an aunt. Then if she does, take care of her. Don't bring her to the church for, for the care. Make sure she's in, uh, indeed a widow. It's not like there are people going around proclaiming to be widows so they can get free love and care and, and money and whatever. That that word indeed that Paul uses implies that, th that there was a scam going on. Let the elders, paragraph, verse 1, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. 1 Peter 2.17 These are the people that are the ministers of the church. You give them double honor that you give a regular elder. Respect. Pay. Because if he's doing the word and doctrine, that labor, that's what he's doing. For the scripture saying, Paul's going to quote scripture. This comes from Deuteronomy 19.15. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. When that ox is treading the corn, don't you put a muzzle on him. If he wants to down, get some of that corn to eat, that is worthy of his hire. Now, if you remember when Abraham's servant went out and sought the bride for Isaac. Rebecca gave him water and gave all the camels water, correct? And yet before he found out that she was going to be Isaac's bride, he gave her earrings and he gave her bracelets, correct? He rewarded her for her labor before she would even say, I do. That woman worked hard. I think it was 300 to 400 gallons of water she went to get for And he gave her her price. If a man labors in the word and doctrine, you are to give him a salary. You are to pay him. As a church, you will be responsible for your man that God put there. You're going to head to the judgment seat of Christ. If that man is laboring in the word and doctrine, you don't starve him out. Because you're not respecting him and you're not giving him his labor. Imagine if your employer, your employer came up to you Friday after 40 hours of work week. Oh, I'm not going to pay you this week. Oh, and some people starve out preachers and the pastors of their churches. I've heard of it. I've heard of good men behind the pulpit. And because they don't like him, they'll try to starve him out so they can get a worldly in. That will itchy their ears. That's wrong. That's wrong. And the laborer is worthy of his reward, his pay. So God is for those that labor, get paid. Against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Proverbs 6, 19, 16, 27. 22.10, 26.10, 1 Timothy 5.19, and Romans 16.17. If you do have a pastor of a church, or somebody in your church office that is involved in a sin, you can't charge them unless you have two or more witnesses. And Jesus told that, that conduct of the church too. Two or three witnesses, and it shall be established. That comes from the law. If your pastor has been caught by two or more people in the church 
that he has done something, then something can be done. But if just one person comes up and says, I've seen Bastard, you can't do nothing. So, see, even though we are under grace, there are two things written in the law. The two or three witnesses is found in the law. The, the ox that, that is trading out corn, that's in the law. Those are still good. They're not going to save you, but they're works after salvation for goodness. And you say, why do you say, why is this verse thrown in here? Because again, some one person will step up, or one family will step up and try to rebuke that guy in the pulpit because they don't want him no more. And it says witnesses. You've got to see him do something wrong. You just can't come, oh, he did something wrong, let's get rid of him. That's wrong. Let's watch. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Bring that sin out. We're going to de-church you. You have a church where we can get rid of you because of your sin, your conduct, and you bring it before the church, and you say, this family we can't have fellowship with them. They have violated the scriptures. They are no longer able to come back to this church unless they repent and get right and prove their sorriness. That would make other people in the church, whoa, I don't want him to do that about my family. I don't want to be kicked out of this church. I charge thee before God. Here's a charge Paul's given to Timothy and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. Look at that one. Elect angels. There are some angels that God chose. That thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Timothy. I don't care if he's your family. I don't care if he's rich. I don't care if he's dirt poor. I don't care if he's pretty. I don't care if he's handsome. I don't care what. There's no respect of persons, Timothy, in the ministry. Boy, has that been is that one followed up in the churches today? Timothy, you're not to have any clicks. Did I bring it up to date? That's what that verse means. Lay hands suddenly on no man. All right. Timothy is going to have men going to come up out of his ministry. They're going to be called to preach. They're going to learn under him. And Timothy's not just going to say, okay, we're just going to have an ordained service. Everybody come up, who you think, and we're just going to lay it. That's not the way it is. Timothy, do not put an ad in the, in a, in a magazine for 1995. We can send you an ordained certificate, and you're ordained by the church of this magazine. you got to prove those men, chapter 3. Okay. Be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Proverbs chapter 1. Hey, we're going to go kill this guy. No, don't you have anything part of that. Don't you, Timothy, get involved in other man's sin. Rebuke him, Murray says. You realize there are preachers and pastors today that will step out of that pulpit Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon or during the week they'll sit in a bar. They're, they're cheating on their wives. They will go to a hotel and they will rent perverted X-rated videos. And other preachers will take part in it with them. Some preachers, when they get together away from their wife and children and their church, they become sinners greatly. Paul says, don't you be part of that. Drink, oh, you want a verse that, 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 that drunkards will know in the Bible? Drink no longer want water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. 
Man, I, you know how many times I had this verse quoted to me by people who wanted a drink? Now, let's just get to the fact is, uh, I'll use Mexico. You know if you drink Mexican water, you're going to end up in a Mexican toilet. All right, the water is unclean, it's unsanitary, it is anywhere in the world. There are drinking waters that are not to the standard of American drinking water. And you're not used to it, and it will get you sick. Timothy has got to the case, wherever he is, or maybe it's a stomach infirmity, that the water, it doesn't say where the water, it just says water is bothering him. With the advice of a medical doctor, Luke, who is traveling with Paul, first, Second Timothy chapter 4. Hey, Luke, yeah. Timothy is writing me. He says the, the water is just making him sick. Is it? All right, you write to him, drink a little wine. What's the prescription for my stomach's infirmity? Wine is better if the water is bad for you. And this verse can also be used. People say, I've used this verse before. People say, oh, can I take cough medicine? It's got alcohol. Can I take this medicine? It's got alcohol. Yes, you can. By verse 23. This would be the proper use to use alcohol as medicine. Timothy has an ailment. He's going to take something that has alcohol to relieve his ailment. Cough medicine, uh, 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 mouthwash are good for your health but he says take a little and for your problems so what do you see where you find a lot of bums hanging out what, what kind what is among the litter you will see wash mouthwash bottles that's got alcohol in it verse 24 Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before the judgment, and some men they follow after. You may look at that verse and say, what on earth is that verse saying? There are two kinds of men. Number one man, you know he's a sinner, and it just that guy just spells out what he's doing as a sin. Number two, the second man, he's sinning. But it's going to take some time to, to realize what he's sinning. Within time, you'll find out what character that person and what he's doing. Understand? And this goes with, you know, lay hands, son of no person. you got to study that person. But in reality about people, Timothy, you're going to look at some people and say, yep, woohoo, yep, that's him. And then realize before you show any favoritism to another fellow, He's a sinner too, and within time, it will reveal what that person does. We're all sinners. Some stand out with a big sign that says, idiot. Or it could be uh, open sin or hidden sin. Open sin or hidden sin. Is the, is the two conducts of sin in a man. It spells it out. I mean, you can look at a man in, in the congregation and see he's got a bruised thumb. He's always got a bruise thumb. Well, that guy, he's got to be a comforter. And he's always got to probably take that hair and whap. And then again, you'll take someone else, you know, he's a comforter, but he doesn't have a bruise thumb. And you learn later on because he uses one of those pneumatic nailers. They're both comforters. One guy, hey, look, I'm a comforter by the, by the thumb. The other one you learn, you know, follow on, and, you know, you see him working on a roof one day. Time will show. Time will tell. Some, sometimes time doesn't need to be told. Some people, you, you can take a whiff of them while they're talking. Whew, man, you drink. <laughs> Whoa. You ever had that person? You get, oh, man. You want to get away from them. And you got you got Mr. Nice Guy. You think he's all wonderful. And then if you look at that, maybe he does drink too. He just doesn't do it openly. Likewise. Also, the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. There are some people who do good. Man, they're going to stand out. There is no hiding a person that does good. 
But realize also, that good person does good, he could be also sinning. Just give him a little time. That good that he does may be, you know, maybe a, a string attached. But usually somebody who's good, they stand out, especially in church. So we look at the work of a good minister of Jesus Christ. There are people who will need help. There are people who will grow in the ministry. There are people who sin openly, sin privately. But there is no favoritism. Some people and what they're doing, they've got rules set by the Bible. And like I said, with the widow, you can't, she can't be... The, Oh, she is sweet and lovely and wonderful. And she does pray. She does take care of people. She does love the Lord. She does do right. She's 30 years old. You can't take her in, a, in the church. You can't. you got to advise that woman to get married. And then you can't realize that don't go take part in other people's sins. And you're going to deal with a lot of people. And chapter 5 is the minister of a church is going to take care of a lot of people. Good and bad. Young and old. Male and female. Boy, just the people of the ministry is going to give you a headache.